In previous videos, we looked at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of Hermitian matrices. The eigenvalues are real and the er vectors are orthogonal. And unitary matrices, where the eigenvalues are on the unit circle and the eigenvectors are orthogonal. Now we're going to revisit this question in terms of matrix factorizations and see what Hermitian matrices and unitary matrices have to do with one another. So let's suppose we have a Hermitian operator on CN, in other words, an n by n Hermitian matrix. We can write that as PDP inverse because it's diagonalizable. And the matrix P has all the eigenvectors, and the matrix D has all the eigenvalues. So we have this matrix of eigenvectors, but remember, the eigenvectors of a Hermitian operator are orthogonal. And you can always pick an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. So without loss of generality, we can assume that these eigenvectors are all orthonormal. And so that makes P a unitary matrix, because any matrix whose columns are orthonormal is unitary. And our matrix D, it's our matrix of eigenvalues, is real and diagonal. So that means what we can write H as unitary times real diagonal times the inverse of the unitary. OK. Now, a very special case of that is when H is a real symmetric matrix. That is to say, it's, it's Hermitian, but it's a real matrix, so transpose conjugate is just transpose. <clears throat> Since H is real, the eigenvalues are real, and we get the eigenvectors by row reducing h minus lambda i, and so the eigenvectors are real. And so our matrix of eigenvectors isn't just unitary, it's orthogonal, because all of the vectors are real. And if we pick the sign of, you know, it's orthogonal, so the determinant is plus or minus 1. And by flipping the sign of the last column, if necessary, we can make the determinant equal to plus 1. So this means that P is, an ortho is a rotation matrix. We can write H is R, D, R inverse. In other words, up to a rotate, the change of basis that takes us from our original basis to our new basis is just a rotation. So it's like tilting our heads. By rotating our, our coordinate axes, we can make the Hermitian matrix H look just like a diagonal matrix. So for example, we have our favorite matrix, 2, 1, 1, 2. Now, we usually call the eigenvectors of this 1, 1, and 1, minus 1, 1. Or actually, 1, 1, and 1, minus 1. But we need to rescale these to be unit vectors, so it's 1 over root 2. And if you have 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2, you'd get a matrix whose determinant is negative. So we'll take minus 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and we get a matrix whose determinant is positive. And this matrix just gives us a rotation by 45 degrees. So the, the vector 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 is pointing in the 45 degree direction. The vector minus 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 is 90 degrees counterclockwise from that. So what our matrix is doing is it's stretching by 3 in this direction and it's stretching by 1 in this direction. If we just tilted our point of view, we'd have a matrix that stretches by 3 in the horizontal direction and 1 in the vertical direction. And that would just be the matrix 3, 0, 0, 1. So the only difference between H and the diagonal form 3, 0, 0, 1 is a 45 degree rotation. Another example comes up in physics when you deal with the rotations of a rigid body. To every rigid <coughs> body is associated a, a, mat a matrix called the moment of inertia tensor. Unfortunately, it's usually denoted with an I, which is the same letter we use for the identity matrix. It's not the identity matrix. It's the moment of inertia. And the IJ entry is the integral of the density times the, X, the XI position times the XJ position. And that's a symmetric matrix. And that means that its eigenvectors are orthogonal and its eigenvalues are real. So we call the directions of the eigenvectors the principal axes. These are the axes on which you have simple rotations. And 
the eigenvalues are the principal moments of inertia. Okay. Enough of Hermitian matrices for now. Let's look at unitary matrices. If you have a unitary matrix, then you diagonalize it as usual, and you say, as before, hey, look, the eigenvectors are orthogonal, so P is unitary. The only difference between the Hermitian case and the unitary case is in the Hermitian case, the D was diagonal with real entries, and now D is diagonal with entries e to the i theta 1, e to the i theta 2, e to the i theta 1, uh, theta n. But that's just the exponential of i theta 1, i theta 2, i theta n. In other words, t can be gotten by exponentiating i times a Hermitian matrix, where the Hermitian matrix has the same eigenvectors as t does, and its eigenvalues are theta 1 through theta n. In other words, if I give you any Hermitian matrix, e to the i times that matrix is unitary. If I give you any unitary matrix, you can find a matrix, Hermitian matrix h, that this is e to the i h. You can take exponentials. You can take logs. <coughs> so here's an example of with two by two matrices. This matrix is Hermitian. If you take its transpose, you get minus what you started, and then you conjugate it, and you pick up another minus sign. The eigenvalues of this matrix are real. They're theta and minus theta. The eigenvectors are i1 and minus i1, and those are orthogonal. And if you exponentiate it, you take e to the i h, well, i h is 0, theta, minus theta, 0. And this is a matrix we've seen before. When you exponentiate this matrix, you get cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine, cosine, which is unitary. It's actually, it's actually real, so it's a real orthogonal matrix. It just gives you a rotation by theta. So you get rotation by theta by exponentiating this Hermitian matrix, or i times that Hermitian matrix. The eigenvalues of this matrix are e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta, and the eigenvectors are the same as before. To close off, I'm going to look at an example in an infinite dimensional space, space L2, space of functions. We previously worked out that the conjugate of the derivative operator was minus the derivative operator. So if you take minus i times the derivative operator, that's Hermitian, and we're going to call it p-hat. It's related to the momentum operator in quantum mechanics. And then we're going to multiply that by minus i <coughs> times a constant a and exponentiate it. And since i p hat minus i p, since this is Hermitian, you multiply by i and multiply by a real number minus a, you should get something unitary. We'll call this operator ta. Let's see what TA does. Well, minus I A P hat is minus A times the derivative. The exponential of E to the minus A times the derivative is 1 minus A times the derivative plus A squared over 2 times the second derivative minus A cubed over 3 factorial times the third derivative, and so on. And if we apply that to an arbitrary function, you get F of T minus A F prime of T plus A squared of over 2f double prime minus a cubed over 6f triple prime, f triple prime, not 4 primes, tri 3 primes, and so on. And that's exactly the Taylor series for f of t minus a. So this operator takes a function and it moves it to the right by a units. If you move something to the right by a units, you don't change the integral of its square. So this operator preserves length and that means that it's unitary. Moral of the story, whenever you have a Hermitian operator, multiply it by i, multiply that by any real number, exponentiate, and you will get a unitary operator.